In this video, I want to talk about how you can calculate volatility by using the expected return. So let's say that we have two firms, right? So we've got firm A, we've got firm B, and let's say that firm A, they flip a coin, and if it's heads, they're going to get an 11% return. If it's tails, they're going to end up with a 9% return, right? So they've got a 50-50 shot of each of the different outcomes, 11% or 9%. So if we were to calculate the expected return, of firm A, we just end up having 0.5, which is the 1 out of 2 chance, right, 50% chance, times 0.11, which is that return, and then 0.5 times 0.09, right, and this is just going to equal 0.10 or 10%. Okay, so the expected return for firm A is 10%, and then firm B is going to have a 50% chance of an 80% return and a 50% chance of getting a return of negative 60%. Okay, so now that is actually going to also yield an expected return of 10%. And, and let me just briefly put it here. So you'd have 0 0.5 times 0.8, and then you'd add in plus 0.5 times point negative six. I don't want to dwell too much on the expected return here, but in each case, the firms have the same exact expected return. But do you think that these firms have the same level of risk? Think about it. Firm A, their, their return is, is pretty safe, right? It's, you know that it's, it's either going to be 11 or it's going to be 9, and, and so it's tightly bunched around the expected return, right? The, the two returns here, 11 and 9, they're both very close to 10. So there's not a lot of, of fluctuation there. But with firm B, on the other hand, you're either going to get a return of 80% or you're going to lose 60%, right? Now, ultimately, that comes out to an expected return of 10%, which is same as firm A. But you can see where you could say, hey, this is much more of a gamble. Right? There's a lot more risk here in terms of whether or not we're going to realize a return. So people take that into consideration and say, look, there's more volatility for firm B. And what do we mean when we say volatility? Well, basically we're talking about the standard deviation of the returns. Right, So we can just calculate the standard deviation of the returns for firm A and firm B and compare those. And we'd expect that firm B, because of this gamble here, we could just kind of see that it's going to have a higher standard deviation. It's going to have more volatility. So basically what, we're, what we would go ahead to do to calculate the volatility is first, uh, to get the standard deviation, of course, first we need to do uh, the variance. Right? So for firm A, we would just take, and remember we've got these two outcomes here, so we'd say the variance is going to be equal to 0.5 times 0.11, that's that 11% return, minus the, the expected return of 0 0.10, right? You can think of that as the mean. And, that, and then we're going to add in here plus 0.5 times 0 0.09 minus the expected return of 0 0.10, and then we'll square that, right? And so when we add all that together, that's going to give us 0 0.0001 for firm A in terms of the variance. But remember, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So to get the actual volatility or the standard deviation, they're the same thing, we're going to take the square root of 0 0.0001, and that is going to be equal to 0 0.01, which is equivalent to, this is the same as saying we have a volatility of 1% for firm A. So now let's go ahead and let's let's calculate it for firm B. So for firm B we're going to have 0.5 times that 80% return, let, no, that's an 8 there, 0.8 minus 0.1 the expected return and then we'll square that and when, when I'm talking about square I should make it clear we're squaring this right here, right? And then plus 0.5 times negative 0.6 minus 0.1 and then we're squaring this part right here okay and then now that's going to give us 0.49 is going to be our, our variance 0.49 but again we have to take the standard deviation so to get the, the or excuse me the root of the variance right this is our variance here 
And so the square root of the variance, square root of 0.49, is going to be equal to, that's going to be 0.7, right? So 0.7 is equal, and this is the same as basically saying we have volatility of 70%. So now you see the important thing to note here is if you are just kind of naively looking at these two firms and you say, hey, I want to look at what kind of return I'm going to get from these two firms. I'm debating between investing in firm A, firm B. If you just look at the expected return, in each case, it's going to be 10%. So that's why investors don't just look at the expected return. They also look at the risk. And one very important component or measure of risk is volatility. And we see here, firm A has volatility just 1%, whereas firm B is actually 70%.